Hi, this is Jeannie from Trini Tree, and today I'm going to make a wreath using this lemon sign. This is a, a black and white uh, MDF sign, and, and I'll tell you, it is not just a real deep black and white. It's a little bit faded look, uh, but it blends well with black and white, and that's what I'm going to go with. But it's a... When life gives you lemons, make something sweet. Well, when life gives you lemons, we're gonna make a wreath today. So I have that, and I have two rolls of mesh. This is 10 inch mesh. One is an apple lime foil, and one is plain yellow. They both have 10 yards on them. Uh, they look different. This one looks smaller, but it's just because it's a different brand, and they're you know rolled on the roll different. I have an evergreen wreath that's 24 inches in width. Now our 24 inch wreath measure 15 inches across the widest ring, but with addition of mesh, you wind up with a wreath that's 24 inches or greater. I picked out four ribbons and I'll give you the skews for all these. I have two one and a half inch ribbons. One is a plaid check, one is a Swiss dot, and then I have two two and a half inch ribbons. This one has black lines and yellow flowers, and this one has lemons and it has a green edge. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut my mesh, and I'm gonna do that using my mesh roller. I'm just gonna set that up real quick and just get that ready to go. And I'm going to use two of the dowels, which I've got it turned around backwards for me, but that's okay. This, I'll give you the link to this. This is a mesh roller, mesh holder. It will hold up to uh, three 21 inch uh, rolls of mesh or six uh, 10 inch rolls of mesh. You can also use it for ribbon. Now there's 10 yards on a roll of mesh and typically when I'm making a ruffle wreath, I will make the ruffles, if I'm gonna use two styles of mesh, I would make the ruffles 15 inches in length. If I'm using one style of mesh, I would make them 30 inches. Well, today I'm gonna cut my mesh 20 inches because I just don't wanna have any left over. I'd rather just use up my mesh and be done with it. So I'm gonna put my mesh on the roller. I'm going to cut two rolls at the same time and that will save some time. All the supplies came from Trinity Tree. Of course, I'll give you the links to the supplies. Uh, they'll be in the video description and you'll also find them in a blog post. There'll be a blog post that goes along with this video. You just take your mesh, slide it under that ruler on the front and then you can just roll out the length that you need. I'm gonna just go ahead and get a little bit of a straight edge. I'm using a rotary cutter. I'll give you the link to that. And I, this is also a self healing cutting mat. I'll give you a link to that. But I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that. Well, I guess it would help if I opened it. Just get a straight edge to start with. And then I'm gonna Cut 20 inches. There's 18 twists on a 24 inch wreath, so I'm gonna cut 18 pieces of mesh. Now my last piece could be a little bit short, that's okay, it will not hurt a thing. But you can see how much the mesh holder speeds up your work time. If you're not familiar with Trini Tree, Trini Tree is my daughter Carrie and David, uh, son-in-law's website. They sell all sorts of wreath making supplies, ribbon, mesh, signs, florals, <laughs> containers, seasonal decorations, and a lot more. I'm going to let some of this just fall off in the floor. And if you're ever in Pontotoc, uh, Carrie just opened a retail store, a Trinity Tree store in Pontotoc. That's Pontotoc, Mississippi. And 
she carries a lot of the things that we have on Trinity Tree, not everything we have on Trinity Tree, and you'll find some things in the store that are not on the website. But she also does uh, fresh flowers, and they do balloon decorations. As you get closer to the end of the row, the mesh holds that curl, it's tighter. And I can see I'm almost to the end. I have not kept up with how many pieces. So I'm probably pretty close. So this last row looks like the yellow might be a little bit short. It will not show. Won't hurt a thing. Okay, so there we go. So I'm gonna set this out of the way. sign out of the way. Now what we're going to do is a ruffle technique. The ruffle technique is one of the easiest uh, styles of wreaths to make. I do it because I've tried to, our tutorials I sort of feel like are for beginner wreath makers. There's, I'm not an expert wreath maker. There are plenty of wreath makers out there that are. So I try to stick to something that's simple and kind of basic. So the ruffle technique is very basic and you can do it just over and over and it will come out the same because your pieces of mesh are the same so you won't it won't be uneven so you just take the mesh and lay it down and then scrunch right up through the center you just pull that mesh to you you're making a ruffle and that's what your ruffle looks like and then we're going to open a twist and I'm just going to lay that ruffle in there and just give it just a twist, just to hold it, since I'm going to put two ruffles in each twist. And then I'm going to make the yellow ruffle. Now, you can do your ruffles any way as far as you can put a green one on the bottom and a yellow on top, or you can alternate them. I'm probably just going to go with the green on the bottom and the yellow on top and do that all the way around. I'm just going to open that back up and lay the yellow one down on top of it. And for right now, I'm just going to close it with just a couple of turns. And we're going to do that. Put two ruffles in each twist all the way around the outer ring and the inner ring. Now we've gone all the way around our wreath with two ruffles in each twist. And I told you there's a difference in the mesh, uh, two different manufacturers, and you'll notice that the yellow mesh is much lighter than the green mesh. It's not just because it's two different manufacturers. The green mesh is what's called a wide foil. So it has a wider foil strip. It's going to have more density to it. The yellow mesh is a kind of a light airy and the foil strips in it are really just like a clear cellophane. So it's very light compared to the wide foil mesh. So that was another reason that I wanted to put the yellow on top. Now you'll have some uh, raveling along the way and you just clip those strings. Of course you can, you know, uh, if they're long and they're getting in your way while you're working on the wreath, you can, you know, get those out now or you can wait till the end and and trim, but all mesh ravels, unravels, no matter what you do, so you'll always have some strings. So the next thing we're gonna do is cut our ribbon strips. And I have four different ribbons, and I'm gonna cut my ribbon strips 13 inches. It's always a good idea to measure your ribbons. Uh, measure your strip before you do. Um, start cutting up your ribbon. You certainly don't want to cut up your ribbon and discover that you've cut your ribbon strips too short. Uh, if they're too long, you know, you can always shorten them. But if your ribbon strip is too short, it's just going to be buried up in your mesh uh, and it, it, it just won't show up. So I'm going to cut my ribbon strips and see if I can find some more scissors. Oh, sorry. Now on my ribbons, on my two and a half inch ribbons, I like to dovetail the end. Um, it just, you know, just helps them finish off a little better. And that little folded part of the ribbon, you just might as well cut that on off because you're never going to get that to straighten out. Um, 
I just do that on all the ribbons. Just go ahead and cut that little folded piece off. On my one and a half inch ribbons, I usually just cut them at an angle. Now, you don't have to do ribbon strips. You can make bows. You can make like three or four pretty bows and put on it. Uh, you could do loops and tails, or you can do a combination of um, strips and bows. Now, I have another tool that I use. They're ribbon cutting boards. One is a 10 or 12 inch, and the other is a 13 or 14 inch. I'll give you the link to these. They come from Hot Mesh Mom, and they really... Uh, save you some time when you're cutting your ribbon. So I'm going to make mine 13 inches. So I'm just going to start my ribbon. I'm going to hold it and just start wrapping it around that board. I'm just going to let that fall off in the floor. And I did not start counting. Of course, there's 18 twists, so I'm going to need 18 pieces. So I didn't count, but I can't do all 18 at one time, so I'll just stop right there. I'm going to slide my scissors under that ribbon. Go ahead and cut, the, cut my ribbon off. Slide my scissors under that ribbon. Keep holding it. Keep holding it. Turn it to the other end. Slide my scissors under there. And cut that ribbon, and then I can ease it off the board. And then I can take, you know, several pieces of ribbon at a time and cut my angle. And I'm going to do that on both ends. And I'll cut some of my two and a half inch just to show you how I dovetail that in. But you take your board the same way, just drop your ribbon off in the floor, start it on your board, hold it, and just start flipping your board. I won't make you watch me cut all the ribbon, so I'm gonna end off that ribbon, slide my scissors under the ribbon, keep holding it, flip to the other side, Slide my scissors under there, slide it off the board. Now, to make that chevron cut, I'll just take one piece and show you. But you take your ribbon, fold it lengthwise, cut on the edge, on the fold, away from you. And then when you open it up, you've got your dovetail cut. Now, you can do that. You can, you can also take your ruin, fold it together, fold it lengthwise, and that can save you a little time too. Okay? So now I'm just going to finish cutting my ribbon and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've got all my ribbon strips cut. I've got 18 pieces of each style. I have two, two and a half, and one, two, one and a half. So I'm going to put a cluster of ribbons in each twist. I'm just going to pick up, I'm probably going to finish with the black on top because I want my black to show up a little more uh, with the sign. So I'm going to just pick up, um, I'll do it like this, I'll pick up a ribbon. I'll probably stay with the same uh, pattern all the way through but you don't have to. You can make them random any way that you want to. But just fold your ribbon, pinch it together, get your center point, fold it in half to get your center, and then just pinch it together. And you've got your ribbon cluster. Make sure all your ribbons are facing right side up. Kind of spread them out a little bit. Of course, you'll have to adjust them more when you get them on your uh, wreath, too. But I'm just going to start on the outside. Now, I like to open my twist. Uh, everybody doesn't do that, so you just have to find your own way. But I like to open the twist, lay the ribbon down on top of the mesh, and then close it back, and this time give it three or four turns. And then just kind of spread your ribbons out so that you've got your pattern showing. Of 
course, you'll, like I say, you'll have to smooth out your ribbons probably a couple of times before you get finished because you'll, you'll kind of bend them down as you're working with the wreath. But that's how your ribbon cluster will look. Something like that. Now I'm going to put a ribbon cluster, uh, each four ribbons in each twist all the way around the wreath. Now there's a wreath after we got a ribbon cluster in each twist. You can see this really has a depth now of, oh gosh, 12 inches or so. And the next thing we're going to do is put our sign on. Now the sign is made of MDF. It's about a 10 by 10. It has a burlap string, but we're going to attach some chenille stems to the back uh, with a heavy duty stapler. And of course we'll have to decide where we want to put the sign. I mean, you can put it in the center or you can put it over to the side. I'm probably just going to put it in the center and let me get my stapler. Of course, we had some ribbon left over, and we can decide uh, if we want to make a bow or not when we get the sign on. But you're going to take a full-length chenille stem. Don't cut it because you need that extra length because you don't want to push your sign down into the mesh. You want to kind of position it on top. So you'll need that extra length on the chenille stem to be able to do that. So just fold the chenille stem and put your stapler, kind of staple, go through your chenille stem. Of course, you want to be sure that you've got a stapler that won't, or the length of your staples that won't go through your board. Sorry, that's noisy. I'm not going to cut the string off. I'm just going to leave that to the back, but I'm going to um, put the sign on the wreath and I'm just going to kind of work my fingers from the underneath side and get my chenille stem. And then I'm going to secure the sign to the wreath frame using the chenille stem. Now I'm going to have to flip my wreath over to do that. But I'm going to find a place on the back that is a straight post to attach that chenille stem to. That'll kind of keep it from slipping out of position. I'm not going to secure it too tight, though, until I kind of make sure that that position is okay for my sign. Because it is a lot harder to take, <laughs> to get it off than it is to get it on. So we'll just, I'm sorry, I know you can't see that, but I'm, I'm taking the chenille stem and wrapping it around the work wreath frame. And we'll kind of check, check the position. I don't have my easel here today, so I can't hang it up. Um, but you may want to hang it on the wall till you see that your position is okay. And if it is, then you can tighten it up and clean the back of it up a little bit better and from the back. Okay, and you can make a hanger for the back of your wreath using a chenille stem and uh, just pull your ribbons out. Anything that was like crushed down from the side, kind of pull those out where you can see them better. If you're in doubt, uh, when you use your, if you use a stapler, now there's other ways to attach a sign. You can get some little stick-on tabs that you can attach your chenille stem to and do that. You can use a little eyelet screw. Um, but if you wanted to test your sign before you put your staple in, you could take a little tiny piece of cardboard and uh, put that cardboard under your chenille stem so you got a little extra thickness there. Uh, you know, and staple that, and that way that would assure you that, you know, your staple wouldn't go all the way through the sign. Now, we do have some ribbon left over, so what I'm going to do is make a bow to go underneath the sign. 
Uh, we're going to use the easy bow maker today. You can do a hand tied bow, you can use a pro bow, uh, bow dare, but there's lots of different ways to do it. But I'm going to use the easy bow maker today. And I'm going to need a chenille stem and a zip tie. And I'm going to make my, I'm going to start with one ribbon and I'm going to make my tails about 16 inches. I'm just going to, um, well, I'll turn my thing around. Make my tails about 16 inches. I'm going to start with one of the two and a half inch ribbons. I don't know exactly how many loops I can make. But I measure 16 inches, and then I'm going to pinch up that ribbon, drop it down, twist it. We'll pull that tail toward the front, and I'm going to make a six inch loop. So there's some measurements on the Easy Bow Maker, and we sell the Easy Bow Maker on Trinity Tree, so I'll give you that link. So I'm going to make a six inch loop. I'm going to pinch that up, drop it in the slot, twist. So I've got a six inch loop on that side. I'm gonna make a six inch loop on the opposite side. And I'll probably just keep making loops until I run out of ribbon. I wanna make sure that I have enough though to have another tail. I know I can make two more loops. I'm gonna keep the loops the same size, six inches. Twist each time. I'm going to twist to get the right side up. Let's see. I think I can make another loop. got enough and I've still got enough for a 16 inch tail. So I've got three loops of that style on each side and you can kind of you can kind of separate those out as you go if you want to. It makes kind of fluffing your bow when you get done a little bit easier. Bring that tail to the front and we'll trim those tails when we get done. Now next I'm going to take another style of ribbon. Uh, this will be the one and a half inch. I'm going to make a 16 inch tail, drop it in the slot, pull the tail out of the way, and I'm going to make another 6 inch loop. And on this one, I'm just going to make, I think I'll just make two loops on each side. I mean, sometimes I like to use up all my ribbon, but sometimes, you know, I don't, I don't want to make my bow too full. So I won't use, just have a little bit left of that. Next, I'm going to use the lemon ribbon. Make my 16 inch tail, drop it in the center, twist my tail to the front. Make a six inch loop, twist, six inch loop on the other side. And I think on this one, I'm just gonna do two loops. So I'm gonna come down and make 16 inch tail. Not gonna use all of that one either. And then I'm gonna finish up with my one and a half inch in the black. 16 inch loop tail, drop it down. This time I'm going to make my loops about five inches. Just going to make them a little bit smaller. I'm making this will be two loops on each side, twist to get that right side up. And I'm going to go ahead with three loops with the black. I'm 
All right, so now I have three loops of the black on each side. Now, I'm going to make one more small loop, which is going to be a center loop. I'm going to twist, and I'm going to make that just a couple of inches. And that will be my final loop, and then leave the rest of that for a tail. So I've got three black loops and then this little short loop. Now, I'm going to go ahead, you can, like I say, you can kind of go ahead and space out your ribbons to help you fluff your bow. And at this point, I'm going to take my zip tie. I should have zoomed in. I'm sorry. So you can see that better. I'm sorry. I'm going to slide that all the way under all my loops. Make sure I get them all. I'm going to go ahead and start that zip tie, but I'm not going to pull it tight. I'm going to pull it enough to where I can handle my bow. I'm going to ease that off the board, that out of the way. Now I've got that loop to the side there, and now I'm going to bring my zip tie around to the bottom. I'm still just holding my stack. I'm going to slide that uh, chenille stem under that zip tie. And now I'm ready to pull that zip tie tight. Pull that tight. And gosh, I don't have time to find my wire cutters. You shouldn't do this, but I'm going to cut this off with my scissors. And now then I've got my chenille stem to secure my bow to the wreath. And now all I've got to do is finish fluffing out my bow. Now, to cover up that zip tie, I'm going to pull that last little loop that I made over to the center and cover that up. And then I'm just going to spread out my loops, my tails to the front. Just fluff that bow out. And then I can even up my tails. They don't have to be exactly the same length, but you don't want them, <laughs> you don't want them like that. Uh, so I'm going to trim those tails. My one and a half inch ribbon, I'm just going to cut at an angle. And my two and a half inch, I'm going to Dovetail that. I just finished fluffing out that bow. And then I'm going to attach it at the bottom under that sign. I'm going to attach the bow to the work of its frame. And I've got that longer chenille stem, so I don't, don't want to pull it in there so tight that it crushes, pulls the bow into the mesh and crushes it. Okay. So we're just going to put it kind of right there on the front, front of the sign, front of the wreath, and I'm just going to wiggle my fingers through where I can get a hold of the chenille stem. And then I like to hang my wreath on the door. You know, of course, I'm going to hang it on the door and get an image. Uh, and then you can kind of, that way you can kind of see where you have anything that needs to be straightened out or you've got ribbon that's gotten crooked. Uh, clip your strings. Check your back. You want to make sure that you don't have anything on the back that's going to be sharp that might scratch your door. And just clean it up and make it a look make it look a little neater on the back. Okay, so that's it. It measures about 
27 inches or so in width. And uh, I'll get you some more pictures when I get it on the door. I'll give you the links to all the supplies, all the SKU numbers of everything that I use. It all came from Trinity Tree. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, be sure to subscribe. There's a little link down there somewhere on the front of your screen. And there's also a little bell. If you click on that bell, then you'll get a notification every time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.